I've got all my x's. Now I'm going to do all my y's. Okay, so I do my first integration, and what do you get? This has got a um, this is a constant here, right? So it's going to grab a t onto it minus g t. But of course, it's still indefinite, so I get another constant. Yay, third constant, right? Now, just like I did before, I'm going to use my initial conditions, which handily I have written on the board already. When I say t equals zero. Y dot will be V sine alpha. So what will this constant be? When you've got zero here and V sine alpha here, that's just your constant, right? You'll end up with C3 over here and V sine alpha here, so that's what the constant is. So I've got Y dot equals minus GT plus V sine alpha, like so. And then I integrate again to get to my displacement equation, right? Just like I did before, you can see the parallel, right? So what happens to this guy? Minus gt will become, I think I'm just integrating with respect to time, minus gt squared on 2, right? And you will frequently, because we so often get gravity given to us as 10, you will frequently get minus 5t squared here, or you might get minus... 4.9 t squared, since that comes from 9.8. Um, this attracts a t to onto it. And because this is our fourth and final integration, what comes along for the ride? The final constant. There it is, yes. Okay. Now, just like before, we had an initial condition. <coughs> Excuse me, we're at the origin. So when we put in t equals 0, what happens to these guys? Oof, gone, right? Y equals zero, because I'm at the origin, so what will C4 be? Zero, that's nice. Okay, great. So we have, at long last, all six of our equations give yourself a pattern back. Okay? Now, at this point here, maybe you want to put like another color around this, right? What, what are these things? These are our parametric equations for displacement, right? I'll leave it right there. These are the parametric equations. We haven't been calling them that so far, but that's what time is. It's a parametric, sorry, it's a parameter, rather. So these are the parametric equations, right? Two of them, but I want to ball them together into one. Now, if I want to eliminate, <coughs> excuse me, time, how do I do this? Hmm. Well, <coughs> if you had simultaneous equations, you don't have to write this down. If you had some of the same equations that look like this, uh, 2 and I don't know, uh, y equals my favorite equation of all time. Now, what would you do with this? Okay, If you wanted to eliminate a parameter, a value, sorry, a variable out of this, right? Well, you could take this equation, see this one here? y is already the subject here, yeah? So you could substitute that directly into here. Does that make sense? And once you do so, this equation up here will no longer have y's in it. You've eliminated a variable. That's really good. That's what you want, right? The reason I can do that is because in this case here, y is the subject. So I can just pop it straight in, yeah? If y is the subject, I can eliminate y by putting it into an equation. Now, what am I trying to eliminate in this case? I'm trying to eliminate t. So what should I change the subject of one of these equations to be? T, right? Now, have a look at the left. Have a look at the right. Which do you think might be easier to make t the subject? <coughs> I think it's this one, right? That's why I said I was going to turn this before. So we're going to take this equation, rather than deal with this square and square root, blah, 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 that's gross. I take this equation, and I don't have to do very much to it to make the subject t. What do I do to both sides? Divide by the cos alpha. So that leaves me with this. Now, what I'd like you to do, and it doesn't take very long, um, there's maybe two lines into it, I'd like you to take this object, and like we would do here, go ahead and substitute into your y equation and eliminate t. You can do a teeny bit of simplification to it, I would say you can do that. Um, and once you get that, you will have, hey presto, the equation of part. While you do that, I'm just going to run off some space on here. Okay, so. That was really just writing time. You can see this is what happens when you just do a straight substitution in there. All I've done is replace all my t's with x on v cos alpha. Okay. Now, I can do a teeny bit of simplifying here, right? Just to neaten things up a little bit. So over here on the uh, left term, uh, I'm going to do something which maybe looks a bit weird, but you'll see why I'm saying it. I'm going to do two things, just to this term, right? 
Number one, you can see I've got a cos squared alpha on the bottom, right? Cos squared alpha. But I have a whole ratio that's devoted to when I've got reciprocals, right? What do I call it when it's one on cos squared alpha? That would be sec squared, wouldn't it? Okay, so I'm going to write that. But at the same time, you'll see why in a second. I'm actually going to pull this x squared. I'm going to pull that out separately, okay? So I'm going to write all of the you know, other stuff, g and 2 and v and cos alpha, or sec squared alpha. I'm going to write that all to one side. So I'm going to go like this, minus g sec squared alpha on 2v squared. That's my big coefficient. I'm going to pull that out, and I'm going to even write in one color, x squared. And then over here, well, what, what cancelling and simplifying can you do? Can you tell me what I can do? What's the most obvious thing? The, the v's will cancel, that's great. And there's one more thing you can do. Yeah, you've got sine alpha on cos alpha, and that's just 10. So it looks like all I get is plus 10 alpha, again, even though it's slightly unconventional, I'm going to write it first, and then what gets left behind is annex. Ta-da! Hey presto, this is the equation of pi. Okay. Now, do not attempt to memorize this. Um, it's not worth it, and it's also, it just hurts your brain, and every time you have to use this, if you ever have to use it, you have to prove it, right? So don't, don't bother memorizing it, okay? I mean, you can write it down and put a big box around it if you like, but that's what it is. I just want to point out a few things about this, okay? And you can see I put these guys here. This is why I factorize it and rearrange it this awkward way. So that these are highlighted, right? So I want you to look at this guy here, right? It's got all these coefficients, sorry, not coefficients, it's got all these pro numerals in here, right? But G, I want you to notice, it's a constant, right? It might be 10 or 9 or 8 or whatever, but it's constant. What about alpha? Where's alpha? What, like, what does it actually represent? I rubbed off the diagram because I've never spent it. It's your angle of projection, right? Now, I could say angle of inclination, because it is, but angle of inclination can change, right? At certain points, for example, the angle of inclination might be zero, the angle of inclination might be dropping down, because it's an angle of uh, depression, okay? But alpha does not change, because where is alpha? It's at the origin, at time zero, when you first launch this thing, right? In other words, alpha is a constant. Does that make sense? So that means sec squared alpha is also <coughs> constant. What about v? What is that? In this context, you have to be careful because in different questions they'll say v is different things. But in this context, what did you say v was? It was your initial velocity, right? It's your projection speed, okay? In other words, it's a constant, right? So all of this, despite how disgusting it looks, it's just a number, right? It might be like 3 <laughs> or, or 2.1 or whatever. It's all a constant. This is where the action is happening, right? So, this here is just a constant, it's also negative. It's a negative constant here. And if your equation has x squared and x's in it, what kind of a shape is it going to give you? It's a parabola, right? Because this is a quadratic in x, that shape which you've been drawing as a parabola all this time is actually a parabola. You've got to be careful, not all things that just look like they are, are, but we have just proved that the path that a projectile takes is, always is, a parabola. So that's kind of a really big takeaway from this proof. Okay. Alright, now, why do we care about this? Okay, um, I gave you a reason to care right at the beginning. Do you remember what the reason was? Like, why would we bother eliminating T? Because that took a long time. What was the reason? What kinds of questions do you get asked often in projectile motion questions? What kinds of, what, what verb goes with it? Not verb. The verb? Adjective. Um, the question is often where, right? Where is something happening? Often we don't care when it happens, we just care where it lands, or where it rebounds, or whatever, or where it is at the highest point, okay? So this equation here will give that to you really quick smart, okay? 